Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know that um, in my absence for a little while, uh, there was some conversation about the new FDA rules on uh, lab, laboratory developed tests, or LDTs. And I want to probe that a little bit more with you, if I can. Um, and, and everybody here knows that the character of LDTs has really changed since FDA first instituted the enforcement discretion for LDTs nearly 50 years ago. And in, in 1976, the model sort of was the simple manual test being performed in local labs, but now LDTs use um, complex software, developing technologies, and people are using them to inform extremely sensitive life, life implications, uh, the decisions they're making. And so the changing character of LDTs necessitates a change in their oversight and a balanced system that prov promotes public health and encourages innovation is critical. Now, so I know um, after the FDA uh, issued its recent rule, uh, there was a, a lot of concern, and many of my colleagues on this committee disagreed with the approach of regulating LDTs through the medical device regulations. And I frankly agree with that. I think that, uh, I think that, that FDA did what it could in terms of trying to regulate LDTs, but I also think that cr Congress should create a better oversight framework, not just for LDTs, but for in vitro clinical tests in general. And so the, the FDA rule has been finalized. And so I think that everybody who is thinking about this now has to realize it's not like the option is do we regulate LDTs or don't we regulate LDTs because we're regulating LDTs now. The question is, how do we want to accomplish that regulation? Do we want to do it through the medical device regulation, or do we want to create a modernized, tailored approach to in vitro um, clinical tests? So Dr. Shuren, I just want to ask you, now FDA published the rule in the Federal Register on May 6th, just a couple of weeks ago. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so some people have said we could have a Congressional Review Act resolution here that would solve this problem. But since it's been published like this, there's not going to be a CRA this Congress, and it would be irresponsible to do one without a legislative alternative. Based on the majority leader's calendar, the CRA look back window for next Congress will only extend to rules that are published this week. So the only two options that we have are the implementation of the rule that was just published or if we pass a legislative solution. A CRA, in my opinion, is a waste of time, especially because we've discussed in this very subcommittee the Valid Act a vetted, balanced, and, and bipartisan and rational framework for regulation of in vitro clinical tests in general. And so I'm hoping that we can all work together on this. Now, um, some people said that oversight of LDT should be taken through reforms to CLIA, which is a framework through which CMS oversees clinical laboratory operations. However, both FDA and CMS have said that idea is ill-advised. Dr. Shearn, can you explain why that idea doesn't work? Well, CLIA doesn't pertain to key aspects on test design and validation like clinical validity. It doesn't have uh, reporting for problems or surveillance or even tracking the LDTs that are out there. And so we have been on record. Um, I actually testified before this committee nine years ago with the deputy administrator from CMS, and we said the same thing back there, and, as, and more recently, and CMS has said, they, if you expanded it, they don't have the expertise to go ahead and do it. It sits with the FDA, and complete, uh, putting in place a duplicative system would only create more bureaucracy and more inconsistency. Thank you. I want to turn to something else that FDA simply cannot do under its current authorities. And so I'm wondering if you can briefly Tell us about the concept of technology certification that we have in the Valid Act and how it would re relieve the burden from both test developers and FDA reviewers. Um, no, we couldn't do with it our current authority. That's right. right. And so that novel approach is more about focus on the sort of capabilities of the developer, regardless if it's non-lab or lab. But 
it works when you've married it to really strong post-market authorities because you need that with reporting and surveillance inspection. So one of the things with the Valid Act, it's not one little piece. It's all the parts working holistically together. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.